So I'm going to do two pieces in my presentation, and I'm going to do very quickly because they've asked me to sort of speed the schedule up here a little bit. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit what we do. So here's the elevator pitch portion of my presentation because I think it's always have, good to have some context on what we do. So we take advantage of hardware security that's already embedded in your devices to wrap keys with rules so that we can assure that your keys on your device are only used when you want them to be. And we hook those to external cybersecurity controls and inter internal controls to make the protection of your keys safe and to make the protection of your keys part of the integrity of the transaction. We do this on millions of mobile devices that have already been shipped into the marketplace. We support a platform that's already been deployed on 1.4 billion devices over the last five years. So figure at least half of those batteries are dead and the machines are in their drawer. So it's probably about a 700 million unit um, available market. One of the key things that we do is we tie this trust agent in your device, your hardware wallet and your mobile phone. This is the best available security we have, embedded hardware within the silicon to external security services that can be paid for by tokens. So you could ask your carrier, only allow this key to be used if I'm at home. By the way, you could use that to log on, to do an IoT service, to do cloud services, a variety of different capabilities. We had a really interesting conversation about tax, actually with the UK government recently, about maybe we should only let you use the key if you've got previously calculated the tax for this transaction, so you can assure that every transaction you've done in this manner has got the tax paid. It would be a very cool use of this kind of a model. But if we tie all of the value that you have to your mobile device, then what happens when you lose it? So you really don't want your identity to exist just in a single device. You want your collection of devices to be your identity. That's how you assure that if you want to do higher value transactions, maybe it takes mom's phone and dad's phone and something else in order to execute the transaction. Or if you lose a phone, maybe it takes two to recover. There are lots of different ways to use the collection of things. By the way, our household is growing in things. Like you could add the car and the refrigerator and other things. Like if somebody steals your refrigerator, you can't do Bitcoin transactions. There's all sorts of interesting opportunities as to how these things could be used. And we just announced a really interesting deal with a little company called Telefonica. They're one of the carriers out there. They're actually the third largest carrier in the world. And what we're doing is dual isolated routes of trust because you can't trust the supply chain. Now, ultimately, what we're trying to do is half of your private key will be protected by the supply chain of the SIM architecture with the carrier. Half of your private key will be protected by the device manufacturer and the supply chain, let's say, coming out of Samsung or HTC. And so that way, we have two independent supply chains protecting your private key, so you're not taking the risk that one of those supply chains might make a mistake, intentional or accidental that would lose all your keys, because we want to make a billion hardware wallets for everybody. So we're working together to put this capability, hopefully for the beginning of 2019, so that their 350 million subscribers can have a better grade hardware wallet than is available in the marketplace today, anywhere in crypto. So that was the very brief elevator pitch on what we do. Let me tell you what fun it's been since, um, September 10th, 2018, 1700 UTC when we closed our public sale. Um, oh my God, what a good time we had last summer with the token market guys while we were all learning how to operate any of this infrastructure. It was really quite entertainingly good fun. But now the real work to start, starts. How do we actually go put in place and deliver this capability into the market? And how do we begin to understand how do we use tokens? I've really enjoyed the compliance panels this morning, but I always missed the whole point. We're going to retail, guys. We started a long time ago. We're about to deliver the project in such a way that everybody on the planet who wants cybersecurity services for access to the cloud with the best available technology for assurance that you don't need to have passwords anymore is going to need to buy a token. Hmm, how are we going to sell them tokens? That's going to be a really interesting thing. By the way, this is all based on a new concept, which is a scarcity-based economic model. We're trying to take advantage of Metcalfe's law that if you build a global network and you're successful in building that network effect in the market, the value of the network grows with the square of the number of nodes. We're going after a billion nodes. But we're doing it with a finite number of tokens to operate those nodes. And so we'll see how that effect actually happens and how it works. It's a different thought than ever has been done in software before where we assume software is infinite in supply. We're just delivering collectible software. So if you want some, it's like buying Ferraris, you know? It's like they're, they're really impractical cars if you actually want to get anywhere. So first thing we do is build a team. Um, team has been an interesting process in this. 
Um, we've been focused on bringing together the experts within trusted computing. We've been quite successful in that. It's a market that I came out of. Um, actually, a number of people who've worked for me for 20 years have joined this project. We're having a grand old time because we're trusted computing gearheads. We're just applying this new key management thing that is this blockchain thing, which is hysterically good fun. And so the mixture of the two is really quite fantastic. Um, we have development that's going on around the world, so technology is being developed everywhere. We're a Cayman-based company, um, although we're headquartered in the U.S. Um, we just acquired a U.K. company, so we're really practicing our global re legal reach and our ability to hire law firms. That bottom note is there really for entertainment value. I think we're up to five law firms and three tax consultants and other. And, and like, I can't even talk tax to Deloitte yet, really, about tokens, because I'm going to go broke teaching them how to calculate VAT tax on microtransactions for cross-border transactions for the payment of cybersecurity services when a Russian guy's working in Massachusetts paying for a service out of Chile. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to cost a billion dollars to teach Deloitte how to count that. Um, so we launched some beta technology at the end of the year. Um, we've had a small trial that's going on um, within that. Uh, we actually delivered a project that we completed last year into the U.S. government around these technologies. Um, we've done some really interesting work with um, one of the global groups of nation states around secure file delivery and secure messaging. Turns out they have absolutely no way to deliver a, um, an ICO account, uh, you know, fund, uh, uh, wallet number. They have absolutely no idea how they deliver that interstate on an assured basis so that when one country sends the other country a file, they know it's real. It's kind of a funny problem. It's exactly the ICO problem. It's like, hey, on Tuesday we're going to send you an address. Trust me, it came from me. They're trying to send other sensitive data, not ICO addresses, but they have no mechanism to do it. So we're, it's a really interesting application of these technologies is for assured, provable delivery with non-repudiation on the quality of the transaction and assertion that the actual data was delivered. So we've been building stuff and testing it and building stuff and testing it. And, um, um, and we've been talking about it. Some of this has been useful. Some of this I'm not sure. I mean, I've put like 150,000 air miles on my body. Um, we've been to a lot of different conferences. It's entertaining. Like my favorite presentation was on the battleship in, in Oakland where they gave me a steel helmet to wear during the presentation was great. It's like a battle station's helmet is a perfectly appropriate thing to talk about in a token economic model. Um, they should have them everywhere. Um, and we've been talking across industries. So I was at CES in Asia last week pitching Bitcoin in the middle of Shanghai. Me and the, it, yeah, it was a, just a few of us, but we had a grand old time. Um, in, in the middle of China pitching why you should start an ICO, it was, it was really good. Um, and, and we've signed on a bunch of partners. You know, our whole business is about having others take our tools, apply them to their project, and improve the quality of the relationship with their subscriber. Because guess what? We got a keys problem here, guys. Everybody comfortable their keys are properly protected and that you are, you've got a good plan for the family bank that you now control at home and that we're going to be able to run that for a billion people? Like, we're having a hard time just making the current few million wallets work in a manner that is really comfortable for everybody. And so we have a lot of work to do. It's going to take a lot of companies. The models that Trezor and Ledger and others are doing of separate devices, what we're trying to do with an embedded mobile device, there'll be other things that come along as well. It's going to take a whole community to make this drive forward. We're probably a little bit different than others in that, well, yes, we've been building our token infrastructure. We've also done a couple of, merge, of acquisitions. Bought a little, little company that's involved in um, the concept of social backup and recovery, like how do I use the other people in my household and friends, like can mom unlock the unlocking of my private key with a phone call? And actually there are things like that that are incredibly well done that are out there in the marketplace. And so this is an interesting economic mechanism to re create recovery and assure that we don't have loss. And, and so that's one of the real challenges. And so that was a nice small deal. You'll see that technology kind of really embedded in the fabric of what Rivets does. Um, more recently, we just completed in May the acquisition of a small payments company in the UK. This one's kind of fun. This is uh, an existing um, Ledger-based back office actually being ported to Hyperledger right now. It has a couple hundred customers on it. It um, gets fiat currency airdropped every couple of weeks because our partner is the Department of Welfare and Pension 
And it turns out welfare is just that, an airdrop of fiat every two weeks. People like airdrops of fiat. Like if I send you 200 pounds every couple of weeks, you're good with that. You actually spend it. It's amazing. Not like airdrops of tokens you've never heard of that show up in my wallet. You'd spend your 200 pounds if we just dropped it in your wallet every day. Um, and, and so that one's really fun because we're trying to show off the real power of blockchain. Um, we have already demonstrated, and it'll probably take us a while, probably another year or two, hopefully. It'll be less time than that. But we've demonstrated we can save the welfare recipient 78 days. Because right now it takes three days to fund from the government decision to send you the money to the money arriving in your account. And we do it directly on a ledger at its instant. We will save you 78 days. If we do that properly, you won't even need a marketing program. You just whisper on the street that if you sign up and download this really stupid, really badly written app, you get your money three days faster. There will be plenty of people who sign up for the app. Hopefully it'll be a great experience. Um, but we're really excited about that opportunity. By the way, it includes KYC. It has identity. It's the unbanked in the UK. It has an on-bank and off-bank, um, uh, on-bank, uh, on-ramp and off-ramp for both banking and cash card. And we're adding crypto to it as we speak. And we were just doing evidence to Parliament. Uh, one of my team members was two days ago about this project. They're all massively enthusiastic about it. It's really good fun. And so we. We've worked hard on a couple of global relationships. One of them is now public. Um, Telefonica is a huge deal. We're bringing an $80 billion a year in turnover company with 350 million subscribers who's bought into the concept that blockchain is core to the operation and value of their subscriber network. And we're trying to bring crypto into their architecture so they're a participant in that. Because what do they want to have? They want to help to service and support you because what does a carrier do? They are a key management company that helps you manage and deliver a subscriber key for access to all your telecommunications services. You lose your phone. You wander into the store, they give you a new one. They help you recover your keys for your account. You don't get a new phone number. You get your old phone number back and it works. And so they're really excited about the opportunity to participate in this global blockchain ecosystem and what does that mean? And so we're, it's a pleasure and an honor to work with them to bring this next generation of security. By the way, blockchain's really important. We could have never done this as a security conversation. This is one of the most important transactions that's going on in mobile security today. Because for 20 years, we have not been able to get to a level of certification for identity in handsets because the certification timeline takes 18 months and the phone's life cycle takes less than nine. Dual isolated roots of trust will most likely give us better than any current certified technology that's in the marketplace today. This will meet the concepts of DOD and DISA derived credentials for government credential held in a handset. If you want to do KYC properly, this is a way I can give 350 million handsets KYC that Cayman Islands might accept from someone else. By the way, it's not about countries issuing the ID, it's about relying on the ID from somebody else. The moment we change that, that's the thing that's broken. If blockchain fixes that, we change the whole world. So KYC is really cool, not for the reasons we think, because we finally might actually have a digital identity that can assert ourselves online everywhere in the world. So this is just fun. My, my team's having a baby. The whole team. We're on, we're on what we call the delivery sprint. So our toolkit is going live in, in like 10 days, whether they like it or not. The running joke is it might get delivered and end up in the ICU, but it's getting delivered. Um, and so it's, uh, the technologies are on, our, on their way out to our, our letter of intent partners and others in the marketplace. We're excited about it. It's been a, um, it's been a long and hard process. We, had to, we ended up uh, completely replacing one of the core components that was provided by a third party around the key management of the trusted hardware that's out there in the marketplace today. They changed the ecosystem in the middle of our delivery, which cost us about three or four months. And uh, so we've been up to that. We have a simple authenticator product, so we'll have a few products in the marketplace you can play with. A two-factor authenticator, um, a very simple confirm function that should be added to every exchange on the planet. It'll give you world-class e-commerce support within an exchange. What that means is we can send a message to a handset on a trusted display that cannot be read or altered by the operating system. So you go do your transaction on the exchange. The exchange should send you a note that says, did you really want to send $100 worth of Bitcoin to this address? And you can push confirm. 
that secure message would actually confirm the transaction built in with hardware, with trusted display, and give you some of the elements that you have in bricks and mortar e-commerce security, um, but now online. This is the stuff that makes e-commerce safe that we don't have today for anything, for Amazon, for anybody else. This will make blockchain transactions more secure than Amazon transactions. By the way, the rules are coming out in fall of 2019 that require every bank in the world to do that. None of them are ready. So we might be able to lead the European Union with the first mobile platform for payments that's fully payment security directive to e-commerce compliant. And uh, Chatter is a fun application uh, that's doing secure chat. We're actually using it. You'll, you'll see it's kind of very, it's very consumer chatty, um, but it's, uh, it uses keys to protect the underlying keys, but it also works um, on non Rivets capable platforms. We're trying to show to our developer community how they could build stuff that would work with Rivets protected keys and unlike iPhones without Rivets protected keys. Um, and so it's kind of a fun platform to play with. So all that will roll out during the course of um, July and certainly we welcome everybody to come down and play with them. Um, all these services are going to be free for a little while um, and we'll then turn on the token component and begin to charge for the cybersecurity services enrolled in it. We think that if we start day one with charging you with a paywall to play with our stuff, that nobody will download and play with anything. So, um, so tokens will roll into this as a mechanism of payment. We are up to our eyeballs in trying to figure out retail. I love this morning's set of conversations. Let's talk retail. Like, can we just sell you some tokens? Where am I blocked from selling tokens in the marketplace for service? So is it against the law to sell a token for operation of a cybersecurity control for $2 to an American citizen to provide them backup and recovery to eliminate passwords in their online security service? Because we would actually like to outlaw consumer protections for financial transactions because we're a consumer protections company. We're the thing that makes BitLicense real. So if you actually want consumer protections, I'm like the only person who builds consumer protections for Citibank that are actually real. Citibank's not in compliant with BitLicense. This is the stuff that makes it compliant with BitLicense. So this is kind of an intriguing question as to what retail is going to look like. Do we know yet? No. We did buy an FCA compliant payments platform, so now I have an FCA licensed payments platform that allows me a platform to retail tokens. So uh, we've got some controls around it, but it'll be really fascinating to see how that goes. And so I'll, I'll end with this because I know they want to wrap up. In our world, partners with applications create demand. They, if you have 10,000 applications that use rivets, higher probability you're going to find one you like that uses some rivets. Carriers and other distribution partners create volume. They're the thing that help us push this in front of tens of millions of eyeballs. And ultimately, Rivets provides a set of services to provide the protections in those transactions. And we think it's mixing these components together that is creating this new economic model in the marketplace that we can all participate in. And we're really excited to be a partner in this, to be one of the sort of the forerunners in it, and really be trying to explore, um, be as legitimately legal as possible, and yet also argue, argue with the advice we get from our lawyers, because I've been arguing with lawyers for many millions of dollars, and this is just a whole new opportunity to entertain yourself with your legal department. So the next step is execute. Thank you. <laughs>